Hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're, not at, you're not at your corporate jobs anymore or your startups. You don't have to behave. This is a real celebration. And we're really happy all of you have come from near and far. This is the 2019 2020 demo day for the Metaprop Accelerator at Columbia University. So, a couple of things, a little housekeeping. Uh, we've, got, we've got a nice full agenda. We're going to speed through everything that's not startup presentations because we know. That's what you came here for. You see the, uh, the uh, social wall up here. If you're tweeting or posting, please use hashtag MP Demo Day. Hashtag MP Demo Day. Hashtag Prop Tech will also work. We want to spread the word about these great entrepreneurs, their great technologies. I see so many friends here. It's amazing. I see people from industry. I see people from venture capital. I see tons of startups. I see angel investors. I see folks who have been with us from the very early beginnings. And I see folks who are here from uh, all over the world, San Diego, United Kingdom, the east side of Manhattan, um, everywhere. So I uh, want to say thank you to everybody for, for being here. You know, when Zach and I and the team, when we, when we started this Metaprop concept uh, in late 2014 and officially launched in 2015, we had a big hairy goal of bringing the community together. And it's really fun to see the community come together still. This is our seventh graduating class. It's an amazing accomplishment. Thank you to everybody who makes this happen, really. It takes a village. Um, this is still the only prop tech accelerator in New York City. We think it's one of the better programs, but we'll see how things go later. Some quick facts about the Metaprop Accelerator at Columbia University. We've had 1,700 applications from six continents. Software, hardware, tech-enabled services, you name it. People are flying in from all over the world for this program, this class as well, San Francisco, LA, Vegas, but as far away as Helsinki, Milan, Paris, and other cities around the world. We're very proud that the alumni of other prestigious accelerator programs choose to come and visit with us and spend 22 weeks with us, folks from Y Combinator, folks from 500 Startups, folks from Techstars, and many, many more. We're really proud of the money that these firms have raised, over $50 million over the years of working with us. We're really super proud of all the jobs that they've created for New York City and for their home cities. That's really a huge accomplishment. But really, during this growth program, we're focused on growth. And our startups grow up to 400% in that 22-week program over the years. And that's the benchmark we shoot for. We don't always get there. Of course, all of these startups got there, OK? Um, but really, what we shoot for is supercharging these companies in a way that individually they couldn't do, but collectively they can. Mentors, speakers, partners, special mention to a couple of partners. Our presenting partner this year is C31 Ventures, Mitsui Fudo-san. Thank you very much to the entire team who's been very supportive of the program. Of course, where are we? For the second time hosting a major event in this beautiful space on 46th Street. Big thank you to Convene, our host partner here in New York. Other partners, First Republic, DLA Piper, Zillow for our left coast, I call it, San Francisco tour next week. If any of you will be there, please come. We have investor lunches, tours, and meetings set up. All of our demo days are very special, OK? Every time you see us up here on stage at the end of a program, we're talking about how great the class is. This is no different at all, except that this class looks and feels a little bit different than any other class we've ever done. I'll tell you one thing. This is certainly the most diverse class we've ever graduated in the Metaprop Accelerator at Columbia University. We have five female founders in this class. Six different ethnicities are represented in this class. We spend a lot of time talking to our team, to our investors, in our funds, to our startups, of course, about our core values. Diversity is number one. Integrity is number two. Affordability and sustainability, there's a slash in there, is number three. And entrepreneurship is number four. You'll see a bit of all of that in this class. And we're really, really proud of this. Now, before you think this is some sort of affirmative action play, it's not, OK? Quite seriously, we had more applications. This was the most competitive class we've ever had. 
okay? The most competitive class. So I think that says something about the space that is becoming prop tech here in North America and globally. We're super proud of that. Now, Columbia University deserves a lot of credit. Josh, are you still here? Yeah. Josh Pankman, in particular, who helped get this thing going, has been a great liaison. Richard, Dave, Chris, Patrice, many others. Our mentors and guest speakers, many of you are here. Ross and Jason, Jawson, yeah, where are you guys? Yes, congratulations. Big milestone for a very successful group of entrepreneurs and co-CEOs here. These folks have been in and with us throughout the year. Cushman and Wakefield, RxR, Brookfield, Tishman, Spire, WeWork, Cambridge Creek, Grass, Upper Bank, Sarah Shank, Ross Goldenberg, Doug Chambers, Sasha Zarba, Tara Stakem, John Santora, Joe Sharjanko, Michael Rudin, Cheryl Lambert. Where are you? Cheryl Lambert, who trains all of these startups and presentations. Please stand up. Please stand up. If you need presentation training, look no further. And the great Phil Russo, if you're in here somewhere, you deserve a lot of credit. Yeah, there he is. There he is. There he is. Um, the Metaprop team, really quickly. Evan. Amazing, bringing this class together. Yuri, throughout the entire process, being as supportive as anybody can be. Great job. And of course, big round of applause for Amira. She doesn't want to be on stage, but she deserves a recognition. She's hiding back there. Great job, Amira. Really, really wonderful stuff. So, quick overview of the program here. We've got a word from Convene, our host sponsor. We've got State of the Union, which is everybody's favorite. It always makes the news. Zach Ahrens is going to tell you what's going to happen in prop tech over the next few months. We've got a quick Metaprop update. We're going to honor one of our distinguished guests. And then we're going right into the class presentations. Afterwards, there's networking, there's food, there's drink. This is about the community after we celebrate these startups. So please make a connection or two. Make this all worthwhile. We put blood, sweat, and tears into this program, and so do the startups. So please make sure you take home some value from this. Um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Nick Lavigny, who is the head of product for our host partner, Convene. Nick. Welcome everyone, really happy to be hosting you all here at Convene. Uh, we have been partnered with Metaprop now for a few years and we're always uh, admiring them in terms of their innovative and pioneering approach to uh, investing in prop tech. And um, we know that you're all here for the presentations and, and the pitch day and the demo day, so I'll keep this brief, just a little bit about Convene. At Convene, we design and operate uh, premium places to meet, work, and host inspiring events, like this one. And really the company was started based on trying to answer the question of what if you operated a commercial office building, a full commercial office building, like a full service hotel. So we have 32 locations, 1.5 million square feet across six locations, expanding to London this year. We just announced two new locations there, really excited to be going international. And through our partnerships with Class A landlords, we're always looking for innovative ways to op operate um, commercial office space and create value for our landlord partners, as well as help our member companies integrate work and life. So for example, we have uh, premium hospitality services, food programs, partnerships with companies like Hydra Studios and Eden Health to really bring that best workday experience to our, to our member companies. And so um, we're really looking forward to seeing all of this. Technology is kind of at the core of what we do to enable our experiences. So best of luck to all the presenters and um, enjoy your time at Convene. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nick. All right, one of my favorite times where I get to learn what's gonna happen in the prop tech space over the next few months. I'd like to invite up the man we call the high priest of prop tech, co-founder, general partner, all around probably the top mind in the entire space. And I say that not in jest, I say that quite seriously. Uh, my partner, Zach Aaron. Zach. Somewhere between the words of love Thank you, Aaron. Thanks everybody for being here. Uh, special thanks to our presenting sponsor, 31 Ventures by Mitsui Fudo-san, and our host partner, uh, Convene. So every year in my career of punditry, I get up on stage here and I give my predictions for the future of prop tech. But before I talk about the future, we must delve deep into the past. So here, we have had a record year in 2019 for PropTech. Investment, when we started Metaprop in 2015, 
There was $500 million of venture capital equity poured into the entire prop tech space. In 2019, we don't have the final numbers yet. We are tracking to have over $10 billion allocated to prop tech. By far the most explosive growth of any sector within venture capital that we have seen in our careers. We expect, barring some huge macroeconomic disaster, which of course won't happen, we expect venture capital funding into prop tech in 2020. We're in a new decade, everybody, the 20s. The roaring 20s will start with a roar indeed. We are anticipating this year over 12 billion of venture capital equity. Now, just one thing to say about these numbers. Everybody who covers this space has different numbers. It's very challenging to get exact tallies every year. What we try to do at Metaprop is we try to take as much prop out of this as we possibly can. This is really IT information technology investment. As you might imagine, with this level of financing, we are experiencing record numbers of prop tech companies getting created and getting financed. At Metaprop alone, we are looking at and we are funding one and a half companies per month. We're looking at over 40 companies per week. Our database now tracks 9,000 prop tech companies globally. When we started, we were lucky we even hit 900. This is what really gets us out of bed in the morning, though. It's the engagement from the space, from the incumbents, from the traditional real estate sector. The reason why our virtuous feedback loops function is because of all of you, the mentors, the community members, the people who have a bug for prop tech, who want to leverage it to do your job faster, better, and cheaper. What we noticed when we started five years ago was that everybody who was interested in prop tech began at one of these concentric circles. Maybe they wanted to invest. Maybe they wanted to sponsor community events like the Metaprop Accelerator at Columbia University Demo Day. Maybe they wanted to aggressively pilot and test software within their organizations. What we're finding now at the dawn of the 20s is that all of these are converging into the center of that Venn diagram. And if you are a real estate professional and you want to get the most out of this ecosystem, you have to do all three of these things and you have to do them well. One of the things we're most excited about is that the mergers and acquisitions environment in our space remains positively ebullient and it is only growing. Back when we started the firm, if you were a commercial company, maybe you'd get bought out by CoStar, maybe you could get bought out by RealPage. If you were a resi company, maybe Zillow would buy you. Those are really your only options. Now you have a plethora of options available for an exit if you are an early stage company. And then of course, there's the opportunity, the IPO window remains at this point ajar. So you have all of these new players, digital incumbents like Oracle, private equity funds, large real estate companies like Cushman and Wakefield, CBRE and JLL, all acquisitive in the space. So what's gonna happen? What are some key takeaways? Well, venture capital, I'm gonna give, you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give everybody a, a, a secret here. Venture capital in this space, all you have to do is look at other spaces and what's innovated there. Look at FinTech, what's happening? Things are unbundling. We're gonna see more and more unbundling, more API as a first businesses in prop tech in this year and the decade forward than ever before. If you track trends, you can track trends like we do. You start in FinTech, you migrate to residential, onto commercial, and then into the construction industry. That's how we think of things. We are quite bullish on the future. So that remains, what are my predictions for the future? What is going to happen in 2020? Here we go. In 2020, I've been saying this now every year, it hasn't happened. In 2020, we will see the first ever commercial real estate transaction closed that requires zero wet signatures. All digital, entirely digital commercial real estate closing. Still 
waiting on that one. What else are we going to see? We could see the direct listing or IPO of Airbnb, perhaps the largest company in the entire prop tech ecosystem, depending on how it's valued. So the question for 2020, will Airbnb IPO or will it be the same DIPO that we saw a company that will remain nameless go through in 2019? What else is going to happen? I believe, based on all the research and all the push from legislators and developers, people really wrapping their heads around ESG, the first completely carbon neutral building will be built ground up or will be retrofitted in this coming decade. We will see innovations like cross laminated timber go from 18 stories tall to full blown 60 story skyscrapers out of new materials that years ago we didn't think were possible. These new materials, they're just recycling of old materials. Nothing is new under the sun, but everything is also new. What I'm most excited about though, of course, Mars. We are going to 3D print a habitable structure on Mars. The year will be 2174. <laughs> And we will all be there to witness it. <laughs> anyway, um, that's all for my predictions. I'm so grateful to be here. Uh, thank you. I'm going to pass it back to my uh, compatriot here, Aaron Block, and he will keep the show rolling. Mars has been happening for a while now. Yeah, we yeah, we're getting more realistic, but the numbers don't lie here, folks. I mean, uh, bold predictions from the professor at Columbia University aside, we've got some, we've got some really positive momentum in the space. I want to give you a quick update, as we always do, about Metaprop, and then let's get into this show. Enough of the talk, huh? Uh, the team has grown substantially. We've really made an effort over the last year, for those of you who knew us way back when, as an accelerator. An accelerator is part of what we do. We are a world-class investment manager. We are venture capitalists. We run three funds of institutional capital from strategic partners all the way to institutional traditional sources of LP capital and venture capital. Uh, notably on this expanding team, 13 FTEs as of yesterday. <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry, a little acknowledgement there to the new folks. Um, and also uh, three women appointed to key leadership roles inside this organization, furthering the commitment to diversity, inclusion in this firm. We want to live it. We want to breathe it. We don't just want to preach it here. Really proud of this group. It's turned into quite a force in the prop tech space. And we're always actively doing things. It's part of our DNA. When I say doing things, it's usually bringing the community together for something like this. In addition to the Accelerator program, Amira spearheaded a new initiative, pioneering yet again another new initiative in the prop tech space, what we call ERGs, Entrepreneur Resource Groups, from within our now 115 plus prop tech startup portfolio, bringing the heads of technology together to consume best practices and share ideas, bringing the heads of business development and sales together to consume best practices and share ideas, and bringing the heads of marketing together to consume best practices and share ideas. These affinity groups, these ERGs, are a big part of the ecosystem and the echo chamber of our strength as a prop tech investor moving the space forward. I don't know if you heard, the joke is on the street. It's not much of a joke, but people are making fun of us because we did actually write a best-selling book called PropTech 101. You may have seen it out there. We encourage everybody to read it. One of the main reasons why this book has a great shelf life is not just the stories of the entrepreneurs that are in there, and some of them are here in the room today. There's a resources directory that we worked on with a partner that is updated every six months show you the way to the best events, best venture capitalists, best resources available in the prop tech space, keeping that live for the community, giving back to the community that's given so much to us. Of course, in this room a couple of years ago, we hosted MIP in prop tech, part of New York City Real Estate Tech Week in support 
with support given by the New York City Economic Development Corporation this year, blew the doors off of every record. I think we had 10 events, 3,500 people from around the world. It's an incredible experience. We're right at the center of that. We're very proud. There's a whole bunch of activities that happen here at Metaprop, but at the end of the day, being a world-class investment manager, funding tomorrow's entrepreneurs is really our core business, and we're very proud of the team that's been together, pulling it all together um, up through these first five years. So, have you heard enough? Are you ready to hear some really good stuff from some of the greatest entrepreneurs around? I'd like to, without further ado, make one last introduction to the voice of God. Whether it was overcoming adversity or changing her hair color every other week, this next entrepreneur brought the passion and personality to the room. Please welcome Rebecca Lima from The Lou. We are currently living in the tightest labor market since 1969. Low unemployment rates means that companies have to work harder to attract and retain top diverse talent. A new LinkedIn study states that companies that are winning the war on talent understand two things. One, they invest in employee well-being. And second, they foster a culture of belonging. Salaries are no longer enough to keep employees at their companies and gen generally happy. That's why it's no surprise that 72% of companies increase their benefits and perks to retain employees in the last 12 months alone. And companies are shelling out billions of dollars into corporate wellness to the whopping tune of 53 billion, and by 2026, that number will reach 90. Some of the most common workplace perks include catered meals, snacks and beverages, beer on tap, my favorite, and fitness programs. Although these perks are undeniably important in the workplace, they cater predominantly towards the male demographic. As we know, women account for over half of the workforce and over $23 billion of the corporate wellness spend. And the wing and other female-centric membership spaces really set the tone and the standard for what women want in the workplace and what women need. The Lou is here to take that vision to scale and reach millions of women where they work every single day. Hi, my name is Rebecca Lima, CEO and co-founder of The Lou a B2B bathroom care solution delivering purpose-driven grooming and feminine hygiene products to support the needs of women in the workplace. The Lou is a cost-effective plug-and-play solution that has immediate impact in the workplace as soon as it's implemented. We use technology to curate company boxes based off of preferences and needs, we then deliver products on a monthly basis and use the data and feedback collected to surprise and delight employees every single month with new products. Let's look at the cost breakdown for some of the most utilized perks in the market. As we can see, the Lou dwarfs in monthly cost comparison in comparison to some of the most utilized perks, catered meals, snacks and drinks, and on-site fitness. And if we're talking about impact here, only 19% of employees say that those perks, catered meals, snacks, actually entice them to stay at that company. On the flip side, personalized perks, like the Lou, drive higher ROIs in the categories of employee retention, morale, and engagement. And we have the numbers to prove it. We've serviced over 12,000 professional women and have garnered a 96% satisfaction rating. It's clear to see that the Lou delivers on impact. We curate some of the highest quality products on the market in the categories of hair care, body, skin or face, and feminine care. 
We've partnered with over 50 brand partners, both indie brands and legacy, to not only help people discover new products in their bathrooms, but we're essentially creating a new distribution model for these brands to have access to buyers. And 100% of our brands are either certified clean, sustainably sourced and or packaged, organic and vegan and cruelty free. We have two models we work off of. The first model is our subscription service. This is our most utilized model because it allows us to have flexibility and allows companies to scale with us. We sell to large occupiers. We consider them fast growing tech companies. Some of our notable companies here, even though Zach said we're not mentioning them, uh, is WeWork and Spotify. And we have another wholesale uh, part of the model. We sell directly to and through channel partnerships. We call them commercial landlords, event spaces, and venues. And this model works a little bit differently from our subscription because we can sell in bulk and we work directly with the facilities teams or event teams. Since joining the Metaprop Accelerator, we've been introduced to dozens of uh, commercial, real, uh, commercial landlords here in the city. And we launched a pilot with Moynihan. We are also on tour with the Female Quotient, a female-centric event space that travels all over the world and will be seen at South by Southwest and the NBA All-Star Game. We understand the fundamental personal care needs of women in the workplace because I am that woman. I have a mechanical engineering background and a logistics background. My co-founder, Dominique, has a supply chain and ops background. And our newest member of the team, Lola, will help us double down in sales this year. We understand the workplace is always changing. So we are so proud to announce that this year we'll be launching the John, which is our men's restroom box. Guys, we got you. Uh, and the gender neutral. Um, the gender neutral box as well, the new. We are currently piloting them and will be in full rollout by the end of the year. And we're super excited about it. We see the loo being a staple of convenience in a person's life. We start with the workplace because there's a repeatability aspect here. We're, we're building brand equity with people in the workplace. Then we can take this to any vertical possible. Transportation hubs, fitness facilities, universities, gyms, whatever you may see it. And eventually our own spaces where people can check in, relax, change their clothes, refresh themselves before heading out the door. This becomes your new bathroom, your new closet away from home, and you'll get access to it 24-7. If you're excited about bathrooms the way that we are, then definitely join us at the Lou. We have uh, the Lou box in the women's bathroom. So ladies, if you want to check out some of our awesome products, then I would love to speak to you at the Lou. Thank you. This next entrepreneur started this program a one-man show. He's ending this program with a leadership team, multiple decks, a business plan, and more money in the bank. Please welcome Ali Kalu from Arin. Thank you. With a show of hands, how many of you crossed the bridge or went on the subway today? Almost all of you. We can all agree that civil infrastructure provides the foundation of our society to operate and thrive. Yet infrastructure around the globe is in terrible condition. US regulations requires annual assessment of all the 600,000 bridges that we have in the country. Still, 56,000 of those bridges are structurally deficient, with the most famous one being the Brooklyn Bridge here in New York. On a daily basis, more than 200 million people cross bridges at risk, and shockingly, there's a bridge failure once every three days. What you see in here is one of these failures in Minneapolis, which resulted in a hundreds of millions of dollars in costly settlements and injured hundreds of people. 
Current methods of inspection, assessment, and management of infrastructure is precarious and outdated. Engineers have to walk, climb, and use snooper truck to assess miles and miles of infrastructure, and then using their naked eyes, they have to detect damages and take notes on a piece of paper. Then, they have to go back in the office and go through decades of assessment reports and compare it with their findings to see if the asset is deteriorating or not. These poor and insufficient information feeds maintenance plans, and as a result of it, trillions of dollars of infrastructure budget are poorly spent, and people are getting killed. This problem is hitting the pockets of asset owners, engineering firms, and insurance companies. I'm Ali, CEO of Arn. We are solving this problem by using our patented technology. We are building a business-to-business -business software as a service platform to assess and manage infrastructure using computer vision, machine learning, and civil engineering. In a nutshell, we are building a digital health record of the asset, a digital health record. Our goal is to reduce the risk of infrastructure failure and its devastating consequences. Let me walk you through how our product actually works. First, our customer, first our software aggregates the data that the customer provides from drones, laser scanners, and other sensors from an asset such as this one, which is a 60 meter long bridge. What you see in here is one of our projects in the Netherlands. Second, our platform can automatically build a high resolution 3D digital twin of the asset with unprecedented accuracy that can that is capable of capturing millimetric level details, such as this crack that you can see in here. And all of this in here are the screenshots of the 3D model. Let me emphasize, these, these are not 2D photos. This is an actual, accurate 3D twin of the asset. Third, using artificial intelligence, our platform can automatically detect and quantify the severity of different damages. And we can do this for different materials and in different assets. And of course, all of this happens in 3D and in the context of the asset. And there's more. We have the capability to quantify the changes that happens in time in order to assess how a damage evolves and calculate the rate of deterioration to predict future structural changes. In other words, we are building a historical timeline of the condition of the asset. And finally, actionable insights. Our platform can provide data-driven maintenance and capital allocation plans in order to reduce the risk of infrastructure failure and optimize spending across the asset portfolio. In our case, data collection is as easy as taking photos with your iPhone. Everybody can do it, which makes our solution scalable. Now, instead of spending weeks going through the data to assess a, a condition of the asset, now the engineers can do it within a matter of hours. Now, instead of having access to the asset once every year while they're at the site, now they can get back to it virtually as many times as they want from wherever they are around the globe. Our product is sticky because Around the world, it's mandatory to conduct assessment of infrastructure systems within decades of their service life. Our technology is hard to replicate and is backed by 10 years of R&D and three patents that we have. Our clients have used our technology to assess different types of assets around the globe, from bridges in Alaska, to dams in Maryland, to building facades in New Jersey. In all of these cases, using our technology, they're able to reduce the time of assessment and analysis by up to 50%, saving them thousands of dollars, and more importantly, saving them millions of dollars from litigation costs and poorly spent budgets. Our budget markets are building facades and bridges, which account for more than $20 billion in the US. Worth emphasizing that 
we are planning to optimize the overall $3 trillion that we spend on infrastructure globally. Our team has conducted proofs of concept, and since joining Metaprop, we closed contracts in both North America and in Europe. We are working closely with global asset owners and engineering firms, such as the Dutch Ministry of Infrastructure, which owns thousands of assets, and a major global industrial group who has access to 10% of all the bridges around the world. We started in 2019, and we are on track to bring thousands of assets to our platform in the near future. Our team has PhDs in computer vision, machine learning, and civil engineering, and has worked at top-tier consulting engineering and management consulting firms. We are proud to have Cornell Tech Jacobs Institute, Metaprop, and National Science Foundation as our investors and advisors. We are passionate about pushing the boundaries in order to improve the safety and resiliency of infrastructure assets around the globe. I invite all of you to join us in our mission. We are RN, and thank you so much. On day one of the program, this entrepreneur gave an uplifting toast. We weren't sure if he was a prop tech entrepreneur or a preacher. With his often encouraging words to the class, he proved that you can be both. Please welcome Khalid David from TrackFlow. Change is hard, but necessary. And we all go through it. Remember when you started your relationship, it was just you and your partner. And now the love has grown, maybe children, maybe a mortgage, but the change was hard. Oh, when you started your career, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, now more money, more management, but that process, that change is, is difficult. That's what we experience in the construction industry, and we call it change orders. Imagine if you had to document and track every change process. And you've experienced a change order. Remember that kitchen renovation that added 5,000 to the contract or the bathroom renovation? Well, imagine what that looks like on a commercial construction project. There's a kitchen in every apartment. There are 40 apartments on the floor in a 40-story building. A $1,000 price difference is now a $1.5, $1.6 million decision that someone has to make on a large-scale construction project. And it's really hard to do because the process is broken. In any given change, there are at least five to six stakeholders who need to make a decision. The process can last up to 120 days. You have an office crew, a field crew, developers, contractors, subcontractors. It's terrible. And at TrackFlow, we're trying to make it somewhat bearable. Hi, I'm Khalid David, founder and CEO of TrackFlow. I come from three generations in the construction industry. And this is a problem that, that matters to me. At TrackFlow, we build an online process that allows contractors to track, manage change orders in one simple place, saving them time and money. And we did this by first taking it from a paper process to a digital process. We added the ability to, to take videos and, and, and photos. We made a simple user experience, enough for the guys that do the work every day. We combine that with the back office that allows each stakeholder to be able to input and understand exactly what's happening on the job site. Simply put, we streamline the information up to the owners and developers by capturing each part of the change process. And we have industry proven results. Within the first year of, our, our, of customer using our program, there were a large subcontracting company here in New York. They saw an additional 10% revenue in change orders. They reduced their approval time from, from, by an average of 45 days. And they saved about 10 hours a week that was typically spent in Excel updating to understand exactly where they are in the process. And we're different from our competition. 
See, most companies, they either try to build a subcontractor solution or a general contractor solution. At TrackFlow, we're the only multi-sided platform that allows, that, that allows subcontractors, general contractors, to use our product independently or together. Furthermore, we see ourselves as a financial tool. So we capture every part from what happens on that site to the base contract all in one place. Our belief is that we're building a proprietary database that can allow you to track real-time cost data on your project. We've already seen interest from companies that finance construction projects and factor subcontractors to get an insight of exactly what's happening day to day. And we've been off to the races. We've processed over $10 million in change orders so far. We're on 150 active projects, and we're growing about 20% a month in users. With the construction industry poised to spend over $10 billion on software and IT in this year alone, the market is huge and it's ripe for change. And we have the right team to take on this problem. Not only the training and the industry experience being backed by the right people, but my co-founder Jake and I, we discovered this problem by working for a major construction firm right here in New York, Turner Construction, where we built an internal software solution to manage change orders, this very same problem. At the height of the program, we were managing over $180 million of at-risk work. We used that experience and that knowledge to ultimately get us to where we are today. And I'll be glad to announce that we kept those industry contacts and we kept selling into these companies that we had relationships with. And since joining Metaprop, we signed a letter of intent to manage the change orders on a $450 million project right here in New York City. Um, this project has come with a general contractor, 12 new subcontractors. And we went from doing about 70 change events in a month to about 70 in a week. And we're on track to getting up to, up to we're on track to getting up to, getting, hitting our number within the end of the quarter. So as a person who comes from industry, as a person who loves the built environment, who loves building, I believe that we need to build the tools to help the change that we need for an industry. So if you'd love to be a part of that change, please join us after this um, to talk to us in the, in the common area. Thank you. From Australia to Denver to Italy, no matter where this next entrepreneur was traveling to, she always found her way back to us in New York, teaching the class a thing or two about running a 50-person team. Please welcome Deb Noller from Switch Automation. Remember travel before the internet? You would go into a travel agency, you would sit at the desk across the uh, desk from a real person, and they would only offer you the tickets for the airlines and the hotels that they had access to. That travel agent controlled not only the entire transaction, but they also controlled your experience. Fast forward, post-internet, and what happened was these big travel aggregators came into the market. Companies like Expedia and Priceline. What those companies did was that they opened up the market, but they also collapsed a lot of inefficiencies that were in the market. So now you can sit in a, in a coffee shop in Florida, and you can book an airline ticket with any airline globally. You can book any hotel. You can even book a bed and breakfast in the backwaters of Iceland. You, as a consumer, get to control the entire experience and the cost. So now I want you to imagine for the next two minutes that you're the head of real estate for a large multinational company. You've got buildings all across the USA. Let's take a bank, say Bank of America. You've got large commercial buildings uh, in downtown New York where your headquarters are. You've got lots of uh, administration buildings spread across key geographies. These might be two, three, four storey buildings. And you have hundreds of bank branches spread right across America. 
What's the one thing that all of those buildings have in common? They all have a multitude of systems, everything from building management systems and meters and lighting systems, and now you're getting this plethora of sensors. None of those systems are connected to each other inside one building, let alone back to your head office. So you, the head of real estate for the Bank of America, is completely flying blind. You have no idea about the day-to-day -day performance of those buildings or how those buildings are impacting both the comfort and the experience of your staff and your customers. What's that got to do with travel? So up until now, there has been no data aggregators for the real estate industry. And that's what Switch has built. This is actually a really difficult problem to solve for. And it's one that our team actually has this really unique blend of experience, skills, and background to, to build this platform. Coupled with the fact that I come from Australia, and it's no secret to anybody in this room that our entire country is burning to the ground at the moment, and that buildings have a very high impact on uh, the planet. Buildings use 40% of the world's energy. Half of that is in heating and cooling. So 20% of the world's energy goes into heating and cooling. And we know for a fact that 30% of heating and cooling can be saved with absolutely no effect on occupant comfort. So that's 6% of the world's energy just by paying attention. My name's Deb Noller, and I'm the CEO of uh, Switch Automation. I'm one of the co-founders. So this is what we built. We created a single pane of glass. We gave our customers and our service companies the ability to connect all of the systems in their buildings. So these are IoT gateways, but also APIs and B2B connectors. We not only connect the, the systems inside buildings, but also things like your help desk ticketing or your meeting room booking system so that you're getting all of your data into one place. We then give our customers the benchmarking tools to be able to measure the performance of those buildings across any KPI. Every customer is different. So those KPIs could be energy, they could be maintenance, it could be occupant comfort, or it could be space utilisation. Next, we give people the deep analytics to be able to dig the sur and, and surface the problems out of buildings. Most problems in buildings are completely naked to the human eye and they're only uh, reported when a human notices. These problems can be not only uh, high in energy consumption, but extremely expensive. So we give people the way, uh, ways of surfacing these problems and resolving them, and that we give the facilities teams a way of measuring the resolution. And finally, and this is very important, this is something that's quite unique to Switch, we actually help our customers to do a central command and control. So what that means is for that head of uh, the portfolio for the Bank of America is they can come up with a new open of day sequence and with one button press, they can deploy that to every single bank branch. And we know working with banks that they will get a 20% immediate energy saving just automating their schedules. So here's a customer we've been working with, Microsoft. Last May, they gave us five of their stores as a proof of concept. They saw an immediate return on investment and they gave us their American portfolio last July. We deployed all 60 stores over the course of uh, July. This portfolio has already had an ROI of under eight months. We've had more than $300,000 in energy savings. We've saved them more, more than 250 uh, truck rolls. So that means we've averted um, uh, technicians from being called out. But the most important thing is we've moved Microsoft from being in a reactive stance on their management of maintenance to proactive, and soon we're going to get them to predictive. This portfolio has since been expanded. We're now doing their Canadian stores. It's also been extended for five years, and it's worth more than $400,000 to our company annually. So what's next? Thank you. So what's next? We've built the technology. Uh, our technology is recognised independently as being globally best in class, as being able to scale for the world's buildings. We've also built a really significant team. Our team is actually 50 people. Uh, half of our team is highly experienced in uh, technology development, everything from cloud and mobile right through to machine learning and machine-to-machine -machine communications. But just as importantly for that head of real estate for the Bank of America, we actually have a team that can help them move from that world of disconnected data, disconnected assets and disconnected people all the way into that smart digital connected future. 
So we have a team of mechanical engineers, energy engineers, data scientists and sustainability people that will literally hold the hands of our clients and it's one of the reasons that people love to transact with us. We also have traction. We have t more than 2,700 buildings on our platform in a range of sectors, everything from corporate and commercial right through to grocery and retail. And we're ready to grow. So we've got everything ready, the technology, the team, the traction, we've proven the results. And what we're looking at now is in 2020, and I'm going to uh, steal some of Zach's thunder here and give you some of my predictions for 2020 and 2021, is up until now, most of the service industries in real estate have been working to a labor model. They put people into trucks, they put people into vans, they send people out to site, and they charge a margin on top of the labor. One of my big predictions is technologies like Switch will be the underpinning infrastructure for all of those service industries to, to digitise. So not only are we digitising uh, buildings for people like that head of real estate for the Bank of America, but our technology can actually be used to underpin big business growth. So just like Expedia and Priceline opened up the travel industry, we believe technologies like Switch will open up the real estate industry and give us a lot of growth in the years to come. Thanks so much to the Metaproc team for being involved in this cohort. It's been a fabulous experience. I've really enjoyed meeting my fellow um, founders and uh, looking forward to the future conversations that we're going to have with you all. Thank you. And for the final presentation of our Fab Five, this next entrepreneur executes like no other and doesn't take no for an answer. She showed the class the true meaning of her company name. Please welcome Manuela Sevi from Alpha A. Wow, wow, wow. What a class. Thank you guys. This has been amazing. And we've learned so much from one another. But you must be wondering what art and prop tech have to do with one another, right? It so happens that all buildings have one thing in common, walls. <laughs> and we believe that living with art should be a right, not a privilege. So here are a few facts. Art promotes mental health. Art promotes community bonds. Art promotes lower, lower vacancy. And buildings with strong art programs have higher return over invested capital. So an interesting example is, how many people do you think Hilton engages to put in artwork in the new property? How it works now is they'll have to hire a local curator. She'll only work with a handful of artists who will then outsource production of the actual artworks within the rooms, which is the bulk of the project, to a number of suppliers unknown to Hilton, adding multiple layers of cost and complication to a project that is already one of 2,300 that their head of design is overseeing. And this problem is industry-wide. It's not unique to hospitality, which has 264 million square feet of new space in the US alone. But there's multifamily with 307 billion square feet of new space, and commercial real estate with 670 million square feet of new space. So I'm Manuela. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Alpha, and we're here to make everyone's life easier. Alpha is the iTunes of the visual arts. We lower the amount of touch points in any given project to one. And we connect companies to the visual arts by licensing artwork by thousands of artists and drop shipping limited edition prints. We are the Gagosian that you can't afford. Alpha is the biggest art gallery in the world, but we hold no art. So how does the process work? Right now, a client can come into our website and fill out a very simple questionnaire. Our AI will then populate a, a collection which can be tried out in different room views. Once the client hits the gavel in which way he wants to go, he can finalize the specs, and one of our APIs will send the artwork into the closest supplier, which will then print, ship, and deliver directly to their door. So Alpha is transforming the art consumption industry and allowing everyone to have access to museum quality art at affordable prices. We're licensing artwork and drop shipping limited edition prints our, 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 we have supply chain in place in three continents, allowing us to import and export art cross-border. We're live in North America, South America, and Europe. Museum quality prints, 
and completely inventory free. If you walk into a gallery or to an art advisor, you'll be able to buy some art. It'll be extremely expensive and many times limited. And there's another thing, nothing is really customizable, which is essential in the design process. On Alpha, any artwork can be produced in any size or finish. Companies like Society6 provide affordable solutions, which are completely disposable. On Alpha, any artwork purchased brings with it the image copyright in perpetuity. And the key to all of this is technology. Alpha offers the quality of a gallery with the speed of online, high customization, and accessible pricing. A few interesting comparisons. In a gallery, an average work will cost about $10,000. An average alpha print, which we'll see a few outside, goes for a, a lot, around $120 framed. In a gallery, you really get what you see. On alpha, anything is customizable in different sizes, shapes, frames, you name it, we'll do it. In a gallery, a custom project can take up to 1,020 days. On alpha, we deliver in seven business days. An interesting example is a project that we're finishing now with Hilton. We worked with the design team from Ideation to build a cohesive strategy connected to the city. We licensed artwork by local artists and we created amazing works unique to the property and we went one step further, transforming the walls, which are traditionally cost centers, into revenue generators by using QR codes and connecting our pieces back onto the platform and providing a rev share back into the, platform, uh, into the property. A few interesting numbers. Uh, in 2018, there were about $70 billion in total art sales, and interior designers bought about $96 billion worth of furnishing, out of which 5% was art. A combination of this and the number of hotel rooms in the U.S. leads to a total addressable market of $6 billion. And Alpha really does service the entire real estate and prop tech industry, from co-living companies such, a, such as Inviso and Airbnb, to traditional hospitality companies such as Marriott and Hilton, to white labels where we provide an API which plugs into different front ends for companies such as Zola. Since joining the Metaprop program, we have landed two humongous hospitality projects with Hilton and the Four Seasons. We've also expanded our channel partnerships with companies such as Zola and Lively, and we've initiated our operations in the multifamily space with Cedar Street and Equity Residential and we have a number of commercial projects rolling out in the next few months. And our team has the perfect combination of market savvy know-how and insider outsider perspective to tackle this problem. My background is in finance, but I grew up surrounded by art. My whole family is in the arts. My mother's an artist, my father's an art advisor, you name it, we probably were around art at some point in time. My co-founder, on the other hand, went through the traditional classic training. She has a master's from Christie's Education and has worked in the sector's most important institutions. And our CTO, Aroldo, has built applications for scale. He was the head developer in The Voice and Big Brother Brazil's mobile applications prior to joining us. And we have built an amazing advisory board which complements us even further. Fritz Dietl is the founder of Dietl, the biggest shipping company in the art world. Owen Harrington is a former SVP at Restoration Hardware. Phil Russo is a marketing guru in PropTech, and Andrea Yang, many of you have probably run into, she's a force of nature. <laughs> so thank you for listening, and please take a look around. We have a lot of artwork, try out our QR codes, and join us as we revolutionize the way people interact with walls. <laughs>
broker here in New York City and one of the top in the United States. We've known each other essentially our entire careers. He was instrumental in one of our great startups growth during the program. The Mentor of the Year Award, please come up and join us, Sasha Zarba of CBRE. Congratulations. Congrats. Stand right there, look pretty, like always. Um, stay up here with us. Um, I also want to say one uh, special thank you. We have a, uh, a presenting partner this year for, for the Metaprop Accelerator Columbia University Demo Day. We've, never, we've actually never done that before. Um, this partnership uh, spans uh, investments, uh, limited partner. Um, it, it, it spans uh, the, the, the environment that we uh, operate in from an ecosystem perspective. Uh, like the Accelerator at Columbia University. It's really become one of our marquee partnerships. Uh, Ishinawa san please uh, come up uh, here and, and join us. I want to thank you very much for uh, being a part of the Metaprop Accelerator at Columbia University. Please come, come. Um, 31 Ventures, Mitsui Fudo-san, we want to thank them very much. Uh, you are officially a member of the Metaprop family now. Okay. We want to thank you and honor you with Sasha here today. Zach, come. Yes, please, come for. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to invite the startups up. I'd like to invite the startups up for a photo opportunity and welcome everybody to Network. Enjoy the food, enjoy the drinks. Amira, great job. Thank you very much, everyone. Sasha, please join. Please join.